Well, hello and welcome. Uh, this is a, a standalone video that's going to be a supplement uh, to our French Revolution unit. Uh, the topic of this video is going to be the Haitian Revolution. So let's get started. All right, the Haitian Revolution. With the Haitian Revolution, uh, the context for this uh, ultimately comes from an island that was called Saint Domingue. Uh, that in the late 1700s uh, was a colony of France. Uh, so there's the French connection. And what we'll talk about with this revolution uh, was a series of events that were definitely influenced uh, by the events that were taking place in France uh, with both the French Revolution and then later uh, the time when Napoleon would come to power in France. Uh, so some of what we've already learned about the French Revolution is definitely going to play a role in uh, making some sense out of what happened in this place called Saint-Domingue. Uh, so first of all, just a little bit about the place itself. Uh, like I said, it was a colony of France. Uh, it was actually really a, a quite wealthy colony. Uh, some of the products that came out of Saint-Domingue were, were products like uh, sugar, cotton, indigo, and coffee. Uh, indigo, if you're not familiar, would have been used for, for dyeing clothes. And as far as its value for France, uh, what came out of Saint-Domingue represented uh, roughly two-thirds of France's tropical imports and about one-third of France's foreign trade overall. Now, some of what we talked about before with France is that they didn't necessarily do a lot with colonization, uh, but what little they did, uh, Saint-Domingue was probably, if you picked one place that would be significant, was probably the, the single most important place outside of France for uh, generating some wealth and resources for France. So from that standpoint, it was really important uh, to France. Now, one of the things that was present in Saint-Domingue was slavery, uh, part of how they were able to, to produce uh, the things that they did produce as efficiently as they did was the use of slave labor, uh, which was common throughout the Americas at this time. And in Saint-Domingue itself, uh, there was a, a very massive slave population, especially uh, relative to the people uh, that were trying to control that uh, population of people. Um, at its height, there were approximately 500,000 people uh, that were enslaved and and forced to to labor in Saint Domingue, and then one of the other things that'll be a confusing aspect or a challenging aspect to trying to understand what really went on here is that it wasn't just so simple in Saint Domingue as you were either a, a slave or a non-slave, uh, but there were many 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 different categories uh, where people would fit as far as uh, what they were, were were thought of as what what their race might be defined as, and depending on on where you fit, uh, that might have made a, a slight difference in what your opportunities or what your experience was. And so that'll be a, a part of the uh, revolution and rebellion in Saint Domingue uh, that, that uh, can make, make this somewhat of a confusing uh, series of events. Now, as far as uh, really moving towards uh, some kind of a revolt or some kind of a revolution, uh, what was going on in France definitely had an impact on what took place in Saint Domingue. Uh, if you remember back to when we talked about the Estates General meeting and the, the formation of the National Assembly, uh, when that process was un unfolding, when the Estates General met, actually, uh, there was a delegation of people uh, from Saint-Domingue that were sent to be in France and participate in that. And there was one uh, racial category in particular uh, from Saint-Domingue called the Jeunes de Calour, uh, which were people who were born of, of a union between a slave and a slave owner. And they had a, a certain kind of, of, of freedom, uh, but not uh, the kind of freedom that many of them desired in Saint Domingue. And so, when they uh, were participating in this nationalist or participating in the States General and, and, and speaking to members of the National Assembly about changes they wanted to see happen, uh, they, they were basically turned down for that, which led to a, a small uprising uh, that would lead to the National Assembly granting some new freedom uh, to some people in Saint Domingue. Uh, which basically ended up making everybody in San Domingue angry. It's uh, from this uh, that we end up seeing uh, ultimately a slave rebellion begin in 1791. So again, if you kind of think back to the timeline of the French Revolution and how those events unfolded, uh, that would have been pretty early in the process of the French Revolution happening in France. Uh, we see this uprising uh, slave rebellion in San Domingue. And uh, any freedoms that had previously been granted uh, by the National Assembly uh, two people, or at least some of the people living in Saint Domingue, ended up being taken away, uh, which just led to uh, more more thorough revolting 
and, and this would end up taking place uh, over the course of a number of years. And, and as, as this rebellion unfolded, uh, one of the most significant leaders uh, that, we, that we know of from this time and place was a guy named Toussaint Louverture. Uh, he was someone who had, had, had been a slave, that that was the role that he had served in uh, up to this point. And, and he would end up leading the way in this rebellion, fighting for uh, life, liberty, and equality, really the ideals of the French Revolution uh, for all of the people uh, living in Saint-Domingue. And uh, one of the things that would uh, come from this process was uh, the granting of, of more freedom uh, than had been true before. Uh, despite that, there ended up being fighting uh, for quite a few more years. Now, eventually, uh, Saint-Domingue uh, would uh, be able to take the role of governor, uh, or Toussaint would take the role of governor uh, over Saint-Domingue, uh, but it was still uh, really in the hands of France and subject to uh, what the leadership back in France might want for that place. And that's when things change yet again uh, in the process of this uh, revolutionary period in Saint-Domingue when uh, Napoleon came to power. Uh, one of the things that he initially hoped to do uh, was, was build a, a world empire and one of the things that, that happened in Saint-Domingue uh, was changing up uh, the, the freedoms that had been won uh, and basically turning things back to how they had been uh, before the French Revolution even began. And this led to uh, Toussaint Louverture actually being captured and imprisoned back in France where he would eventually die. And, and that really pushed people um, in the direction of desiring independence. Now, one of the things we also know is that Napoleon would quickly give up on his uh, desire to have uh, control over territories uh, outside of uh, France and would end up uh, really kind of letting go of some of that, selling some of that. And, and that really opened the door uh, for independence in Saint-Domingue. And, and that's what we see take place by January of 1804. And that's when we end up uh, knowing of this place as Haiti, uh, the, the country that we still uh, know of today. And, and so uh, Haiti is kind of an interesting story. Uh, it, it was one of the, the first places uh, to gain its independence uh, from uh, some other power some other country, in this case, France. And, and that's, that's a good thing. Certainly you think about our country and our origins and breaking free from English rule and becoming our own independent place and, and all the good that uh, has come from that. Um, Haiti was another early place to do something similar. Another story uh, over the centuries or the last you know, two centuries uh, moving forward uh, has not been as, as good of a story as, as the United States. Uh, a lot of corruption, a lot of problems, a lot of challenges. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, what uh, the people of uh, San Domingue in becoming Haiti achieved uh, was, was quite significant and, and quite impressive. And I think that's where I'll leave it uh, for this video. I really just wanna, wanted to take a couple minutes to, to walk through a couple of things with this uh, revolution. Um, certainly, if you want to learn more about it, there's, there's plenty of information out there that goes into quite a bit more detail than what I did in this video. Uh, so hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.